the luminous LED port lights which we got from Costco. So they come in a pack of four and they have adjustable color temperature. And the best part is these are slim ones. So the junction box is a separate box and LEDs are like this thin. So even if you have a stud in the drywall, this will not hamper and you can easily install that. So currently it is just joined. You can just pull the pins and this separates. This is the LED. This is the temperature selector, the back. So right from 2700 to 5000 K temperature, we'll set it to 3000. This is the box inside, a live and a neutral wire. And these are the two connectors which they come in. And on each, both the sides, there's a knockout. So we have decided to open this side, just twist it, and you can throw away the plastic. And these are the cable connectors, which I got from Home Depot. Very useful, very easy to install. Just push the slider. The small part will go inside. These are half inch ones. So it will just go inside and sit there. So what it does is when we put in the live wire and hit, it will hold it. The wires will not come out. So the connection will always be secure. And these are the wire connectors. Very easy. Use one black wire. You just need to push it in into the connector and it's fixed. And we'll put the other black one when we are installing it in the drywall. And the other one will go in the neutral. Uh, this particular model does not require a ground wire. But since my uh, 14 to wire has a ground wire, what I'll do is I have uh, extra connectors which I got from Home Depot. So I'll connect all the ground wires. I'm going to show you how to connect one of the port lights. So one wire is coming from the main. Don't worry, the breaker is off right now. And the other wire continues to the circuit. So these are two 14 to wires. And this is my box of the LED port light with the connector. We just need to push these two wires through this plastic. So this one has a flap. So as soon as the wire goes inside, we cannot pull it out. As you can see, one wire is inside, and I need to push another wire through the same. If it is too difficult, there is one more slot on the right hand side, I can push it from there as well. But as the box says that this connector can accommodate two wires, so I'm hoping that this fit another 14 to wire. It of course struggle for me. Okay, so both the wires are inside now. I just need to slice them up and remove the plastic covering using a utility knife. We just go line in the middle. It will pull the wires inside, something like this, and then you can just cut the extra covering. And same with the other wire. Just be careful not to cut the other wire in process of removing the plastic covering. And using my wire stripper, cut about half inch from both the wires. Okay, all the wires are exposed. I'll start off with the ground wire. Like I told you, these are the Vago connectors. You can get it from Amazon or any local hardware store. This I'll be using for the ground wire because the port light doesn't need a ground wire. That's why they didn't give us the connectors. But since I have the wires here, I have to connect them. There are two slots. So just put the ground wire into one of the slots. You can just close the tab like this. And it's inside. We are left with two neutrals and two live wires. Also, I already connected the white wire. I'll just put the remaining two uh, wires inside the connector. And why is it long to cut? Once it goes inside, it just gets locked and you won't be able to pull it out. The whites are done. Coming to the black, same thing with black. Push it inside and all the third one is just checking all the wires are inside. And we just need to put all of this inside this box now. Push it in. I think I got some bit small box, but it fits all the wires. So as you can see, everything is fit inside the box. And have the covering. The box is closed. Check the temperature, what you want to set. And we can just push this box inside the ceiling anywhere you wish just make sure that this connector is dropping from the ceiling Angita can you pass me one port light we just need to connect the pins there's a small marking just need to make sure the it's properly aligned and then there's a small knot which we can just tighten this is done to put the port light into the ceiling these are two spring flaps we just need to push them and first make sure the wire is inside push it inside the box and Stuff. We have installed the boards and the cutouts as well and this is how it looks right now. Um, the lights, this is how it's going to look. We have just put it for now uh, after we remove it for painting as well. So the next step is to put um, on the edges, we will put half inch molding and we got these ones from Home Depot. So we have kind of cut it out as to how it will look. We are going to cut it in a picture frame way. So we will cut in 45 degree angles on the edges and 
and then we will put them up so it will go on the corner like this. These are not primed, we couldn't find the pre-primed ones, they didn't have it at Home Depot. So we are going to prime it ourselves, we have some primer, we just have to do the edge that will be on the outside and not the inside. So we'll quickly use a brush and prime it and once it's dry we'll cut it out to size and then we'll fit it on the inside of the frame. what it looks like we have all the boards in place all the connections have been done and the wiring has been done we had to make a hole in the wall but we were able to connect it to the smart switch here and uh, half of the room will connect to this and then the other half will connect to the living room switch so we can turn on one at a time and we have also primed all of the molding and we are going to install that on each of these boxes on the inside so it gives a more finished look we'll also use some wood filler to fill in the holes we will also use some wood filler the wood pro x to fill in the holes that were made from the brad nailer in the wood it is very patiently filling all the gazillion i believe nail holes which i did because i had to put these one by six onto the ceiling and this is the wood filler which we are using how is it going on Gita? good easy okay so this is all Ankita has done till now and now I will be sanding this with a 120 grit sandpaper followed by painting. We're making the inside frames using molding. First we measure the sides. So instead of using the circular saw, we use this angle cutting box. This is from Home Depot and it's very easy to cut angles here and it really helps us to be, do the cutting without the noise and the dust. So since the frame is like a picture frame, uh, we cut it at 45 degree angles on both sides and then we put it together so the corners match and it looks like a frame. If you have little or thin things like molding to cut, this is just a half inch molding. Um, this is a good tool to have. Next we put some wood glue on uh, the molding that we have cut and put it in place. Once we put it in place, we use the nail gun to secure it. Wipe off the excess glue and the side is done. We will repeat this for all four sides. And this is the final side for this box. And because of this molding, it looks very seamless. Otherwise, it would look like this, like very rough. And then this is how it will look like. <laughs> The next task is to do the sanding. For this, I'll be using the orbital sander with a 120 grit uh, sandpaper. I've attached the sander to my shop vac. So basically, there will be no dust which will fall off and uh, everything will be collected in this vacuum. I had to use this duct tape over here because the hose of the shop vac was a little bigger than um, the outlet of the orbital sander. It will be a messy job. That's why I use the shop vac and mask is very important so that no dust goes inside. It will be really tedious, but we have to do this. it looks after doing the wood filler and after sanding it down before we do the caulking on the edges we are just going to clean it down with a slightly damp microfiber cloth and just make sure that all the sawdust that came out from the sanding has gone and it's clean so we have a clean surface to do the caulking on 
We are starting with the caulking now. This is the tube I'll be using for the tight corner. We just cut it with the cutter and then very easy to apply. On all other places I'll be using this big caulking tube with the help of the caulking gun. Using a damp cloth, just lightly wet the finger and slide the finger across and all the excess caulking will get removed. You can just wipe it and we have a clean caulking. So now that we have done the difficult tight edges, uh, we are going to do rest of the caulking with the caulking gun and we have the Alex caulking inside. So just going to use it to put that in and then wipe it off so that it becomes smooth. See the difference between doing the caulking and not doing it. So um, we have done all of the caulking and we've put some painter's tape on the side where we don't want the paint to go and now we have to start with painting. This is the paint we'll be using. This is uh, eggshell finish and an ultra pure white and this from Behar's. It says paint and primer in one but our boards are already primed so we'll just give it a quick shake and then start applying it on the ceiling. This is ultra pure white color and actual finish. This particular model from Behar which you got from Home Depot comes with this type of opening and they give us this complimentary spout. You just fix this, fix this and then you can easily pour into your tray and it will not. Starting with the edges with a one inch brush and just a little bit at the tip and then on the inside corner molding. We'll be doing two coats so even if the first coat doesn't cover everything, it will be covered by the second coat. We are now done with one coat of painting on that entire ceiling. This is how it's looking like. And now we'll start with the second coat. There are few marks like these ones which will go off in the second coat. So we have done this portion and this side is left for the second coat. You can see the difference between one coat and two coats here. So Akshat is going to finish the two coats here for this. We are done with the painting, waited for 2 hours, now comes the best part to install the LED lights and the light fixture. So uh, we already have the junction box in the ceiling and this uh, it simply connects, the connectors are there. It has a small slit here which we just need to match with the other end and there is a screw, you just need to tighten this and push this inside by closing these flaps and then they will open up inside the ceiling. I'll show it to you. So this junction box, as we uh, mentioned to you that it has 5 color temperatures, I already set the color temperature to 3000k which we like and uh, just need to match the slit here with this slit push the connector inside and then just hand tighten this screw and we need to tighten till the time a red band is visible to us and this is the red band it's all tight just push the wires back inside the ceiling hold the flaps like this and then just push it inside installed all the pot lights and in this middle ceiling box I'll be installing the Artica light fixture we got this from Home Depot and uh, this is also 3000 K temperature and uh, very easy to install looks really fancy and modern I'll just show it to you how it looks they give screws and wire nuts manual is provided This is how the fixture looks and at the back this is the support bar so we need to unscrew these four screws which are on the side and then just connect the wires and put it on the ceiling. Remove the screws. This is the support bar. Um, in the ceiling box, there are already two screws. I'll just install, uh, attach this, and with the help of this hook, I'll attach it to the support bar. Do the wiring and put in the four screws. I have turned off the breaker. This is the circuit tester. No contact voltage tester. So as you can see, it's all green, so it's safe to unscrew the wires. First thing, what we need to do is remove the two screws which are already provided in the junction box. Now I'll feed the wires through this hole. 
it and go in here. Once this is done, there are plenty of options where we can screw in and just to make sure that everything is aligned and straight. We cut the screws. Their product is hooked which is really handy. You can just hook this before doing any wiring. So something like this, I can now leave this and just do the wiring. So very easy, instead of holding the fixture, you just leave this and now concentrate on the wiring. Wiring is very easy, just attach the black wire with the hot and white one with the neutral and ground with ground. And just use wire nuts or tape and the wiring is done. Next step is a bit tricky, that you have to put the screws on all four sides and match them. Project is complete. I'm standing in the dark on the count of three, two, one. Lost cause I'm a little problematic. Cap time has to up, so think you reckless. So got to say survival okay. eagle hat. So one of the things that we didn't like about this house was that there was no light in the living room. There was only one ceiling light and that was a big problem. And this project really is to solve that problem of ours. And we really love the ceiling and it has made such a big drastic impact to our living room um, that it looks kind of like a hotel, doesn't it? So hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for many such upcoming DIYs and other videos. And you can follow us on Instagram as well. We post a lot of updates over there. And we will see you next time. Bye.